What is up guys and welcome. In this video I'm going to be covering how to make your Milky Way images pop. We're going to be talking about how to reduce the stars in order to bring the Milky Way out in your scene and kind of bring it out from the background away from the stars, really bringing all of the attention in your scene to that Milky Way. This is going to help you create amazing Milky Way photos uh, that stand out from the rest. Best of all, whether you're someone that edits your photos for five minutes or you're someone that spends six hours in Photoshop nitpicking every detail, um, this technique is going to work great for you. Super simple and easy to apply, doesn't take very much time, it's just a couple simple uh, tricks in Photoshop to create this layer. So I'm super excited to show you guys this trick, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so go ahead and open your image in Photoshop. Uh, you can see I've opened mine here and I've got my background layer. Now the first step that we are always going to want to take is to duplicate that background layer. So I am going to click and drag here. And now you can see I have a copy of that background layer. It's just the same layer. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and rename this to Star Reduction, just to stay organized. And then we can go ahead and begin doing our star reduction here. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is go up to uh, Select and go to Color Range. And this color range is basically just gonna allow us to select a certain part of the image. And we wanna do that because we only want to reduce the brightness of the stars. We don't wanna reduce the brightness of the mountain or the flowers or the trees or anything else, just simply the tiny little stars. So some, you can do this either by selecting sampled colors and then clicking on a star and seeing if that gets you a good selection. But my preferred method is to actually go ahead and go up here where it says select and sampled colors, click that, and go all the way down to highlights. And that's always gonna get you a good selection of the stars. Now, mine comes in at a fuzziness of 20% and a range of 190 by default, I believe, uh, but this isn't always necessarily the best combination to use. And for every photo, it's totally dependent on what is in the photo in terms of what numbers you're gonna to wanna to use. So don't take these numbers for um, something that you always have to use. Always dial them into your photo. And what you wanna do here is make a good selection of the stars. And don't worry about if you're getting the mountain or anything else in your scene, if there's any other lights, cause we can always mask that out later. But um, you can adjust the fuzziness and the range to kind of get a good selection of the stars. And I like about right here, a little bit of the Milky Way is okay. I can mask that out if I don't like the effect, but you can see how many stars I'm picking up over here. And all these little stars that it's picking up are going to be reduced, which is gonna help me bring out the Milky Way. So once you have your desired um, amount here, go ahead and hit okay and let that load out. Now you can see we've got this little selection made. So what we wanna do here is go back up to select, modify and expand and expand by one pixel. And basically what this is gonna do is expand our selection by just one pixel around each part of the image that's selected. So this helps us in order to make sure that we're not, we don't have a really abrupt change in where we're darkening the star. So expand it by one, and then we're gonna go back up to select, modify, and we're gonna feather. And I usually like to feather by half of what I expanded by. So if I expanded by one, I'll feather by 0.5 pixels. Go ahead and hit okay. Now, as you can see, this is a wide angle shot. If I was shooting a telephoto shot, maybe something 55 or longer, um, I would actually expand by two and feather by one. So, it, and that is just because the stars are simply a little bit bigger. So it just depends on your focal length in terms of what you're gonna do. But a good rule of thumb is that if it's wider than 55 millimeters to expand by one and feather by 0.5. So now that you can see we have the selection made, what we can do is go ahead and hit Command H and that will hide our selection. And we're gonna, we, it's still selected. You can see if I toggle Command H, uh, it's just hiding and, and de-hiding the selection here. And basically I just do that so that I can see the effect that we're about to apply. So I'm gonna go up to Filter, go down to Other, and we're gonna go to Minimum. And this is gonna be the filter that's gonna reduce the stars. So you can see, I'll toggle this preview here. You can see that we've done quite a number on the stars over here. And you can even click somewhere uh, to get the more zoomed in box here. Sometimes I like to go to 200% and just see what it's doing. And you can see that it is looking pretty good. Um, generally speaking, I like a radius of one, about one is usually good. 
Um, but what I'll usually do is go to 1.5 and then reduce the opacity. It's a lot harder to see what kind of what I'm looking at here than if I just load it out at 1.5, which is usually too strong. Um, and I lower the opacity. You also want to make sure that you're preserving roundness, not squareness. By default, the first time you open this up, it will be on squareness. So make sure you change it to roundness. So generally speaking, I'll go roundness at 1.5 pixels and I'll hit OK and let that load out. And once that's loaded out, it's much easier for me to toggle it uh, here on the eye. It usually will load a little bit faster than using preview. So I like to zoom in and you can do that using many different ways. Um, my favorite way is holding the space bar and command and clicking and dragging or command plus is also another good way to zoom in. Um, but you can see now when you zoom in how many stars this actually takes away. And what I'm always looking out for is this photo actually looks all right at 1.5. I will reduce it a little bit, but in some photos you'll see that these kind of dark little spots like you see here, they'll be really bad and they'll look really ugly. And so that's something that we want to avoid. So if I can, uh, I'm going to reduce this a little bit to give those stars a little bit more life just because I don't want it to just be a colored blob. I want it to have a little bit of resemblance of a star just so it doesn't look too wonky. We'll go about right there. It looks pretty good to me. And I will zoom back out and you can see how much that really brings the Milky Way out. So to kind of help show you guys how much the Milky Way is really going to pop now, I'm just going to do a simple curves adjustment here. And I can do that by clicking down here and going up to curves. And I'm simply just going to make a little S curve here. Bring that up. And of course I could mask this out uh, just into the sky if I wanted, um, because you can see that my foreground is getting pretty dark, but I'm really just focusing on what's happening with the Milky Way. I just wanted to show you guys kind of how much that one simple adjustment does for you. So you can see uh, this would be without that star reduction and this would be with the star reduction. So of course, if you don't care too much about the image quality or you're not going to print, you can use a radius of more than 1.5. Just be aware that if you zoom in, it does not look very good. Um, but uh, if zoomed out at like thumbnail size or for social media or Facebook, it, it will look pretty nice. So just that simple effect there really helps the Milky Way pop. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video and I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. You can see how this really simple technique can help you bring out the Milky Way in your images, creating stunning images just with a few simple clicks. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. And of course, if you have any questions or anything you'd like me to cover in the future, please leave a comment and I will be sure to check it out. Thank you guys so much and I hope you guys have a good one.